The test of a champion is not only becoming one, but also staying one when challenges arise. Frederick Osbo is Formula Drift's 2015 champion, and he won that title in convincing fashion, having won four events out of seven. But now, as we enter the 2016 season, the challenges and challengers are becoming more apparent. Will this be the beginning of an Osbo era, or will it be short-lived? We'll find out right here, only on UTI Formula Drift Insider. The 2015 season started off with momentum as Frederick Osbo grabs the win and sets the tone with the win in Long Beach. But moving into Road Atlanta, Odie Bakshis made his move as he was able to take down his first ever event win in dramatic fashion. Round three, things got wet and wild and Ryan Turk grabs his first win since 2009. In Jersey, the weather won again, but so did Frederick Osbo. As the series heads to the Pacific Northwest, rain again, but also Osbo navigated through a field to take his third win of the year. At round six in the Lone Star State, things got mixed up as Ken Gushi was surging to take the lead from Osbo, but Japanese star Masashi Yokoi would eventually get the win. And finally, round seven, the House of Drift, Irwindale, California, a fitting end to a crazy season. The Norwegian hammer Frederick Osbo and Ken Gushi battle till the end, but Osbo getting the win and the championship. I dreamt about winning the Formula Drift Championship for 10 years. You know, it was the ultimate dream come true for me. And looking back at Irwindale, it was a big relief. You know, it's been something that I've chased for so many years with my guys, my crew, even my family and friends from back home. They've all pushed me towards earning, earning that championship. So for it to come together like that was the biggest moment of my life. I've had a great off season, but I'm poised to be back here defending the title. Well, there's a lot of pressure on Frederick Osbo. I mean, once you win that first championship, uh, everybody has their sights on you and they're making new changes to their vehicle and they're bringing new things to the table. So he's got to stay focused and come out with a strong program and a good mentality if he wants to retain his crown. You know, it's like when you when you watch like a uh, like a movie trilogy, right? You end uh, whatever part one and, and they leave you with such a good ending that you're looking forward to part two. I feel like last season was like that. You have the top five having such a competitive struggle throughout the year up and down just like leaves you for what's part two what's 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 this 13th season going to be like what are those five drivers going to do this season and are there new drivers that's going to come into the fold i mean uh, in an interview that osbo did a while ago he said that this year 2016 is probably going to be the most competitive field ever and i agree i mean there's a lot of guys that are bringing their a game you know fresh builds fresh rebuilds and uh just looking at all these builds, you know, it really brings the excitement factor up for me because you know these are the guys that competed with us last year. They were full of talent, you know, they had a lot of speed, and now they're bringing, they're stepping up their game. So with that said, we're uh, definitely in the position where we have to step up our game too, and uh, hopefully step up from the second place to the top spot. Coming into this year, you know, we're definitely a little more hungry. Not to say that we just took it easy last year. It was uh, a tough battle, of course. It always is every year, but we have some new improvements in the car. We know what we did last year at Long Beach. We had a, a big mistake in top 16, and I think that's what kind of knocked us back from the first position overall in the season. And so we want to make sure that we correct that and don't start off in a top 16 finish, but more so up on the podium. You know, we were the first FRS to be on the podium, first FRS to win, so we had some really good accomplishments. And um, then we had some other issues that we uh, hadn't foreseen that bit us in the butt in, in Seattle and really took us, um, you know, out of the points points chase coming into Irwindale. So uh, this year we have our spares package is really on point. We think we fixed a lot of the small issues that we had to uh, keep the car on track at all times and reliable and fighting for a championship. You know, I was pretty happy about my 2015 season. Being in the top five amongst these like super competitive guys is it's like, quite a feat. And the team worked uh, really well together. And you know, that's that's all I could ask for. Up, all the rest is up to me. And I feel like I'm still uh, getting better as a driver. So this is a year to try to step it up some more. 
Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Universal Technical Institute. Chosen by industry, ready to work. By Blackview, over the cloud. And by Hankook Tire, driving emotion. The off season is over. With a new look, a fresh engine, and pressure on your shoulders, the last thing you want to show up is the weather and it showed its ugly head in grand fashion. Historically a dry event, the teams and drivers had to scramble to prepare for a less than ideal track as they enter the top 32. With the weather conditions uh, for Long Beach for the season opener uh, being so variable, um, I think we're starting the season off kind of where we left off last season. It's really gonna test driver skill and how prepared their vehicles are for the season. The forecast right now says rain for race day, and if that comes through, it'll be the first Long Beach season opener in rain. It's gonna be super hard, you know? It's, it's one of those tracks that you go in blind and you have to charge hard, and if you miss the line by a hair, you're stuck in a wall. To win here, especially in these conditions, it's gonna take a very good crew and a very skilled driver to be able to control the car and changing conditions, rapidly changing conditions. You know, rain, Drifting takes a lot more focus and concentration than it does in the dry. So um, I guess having the right wet setup is going to be key. And uh, staying focused, staying away from the walls or off the walls. Just wrapped up practice here in Long Beach and it was insane, inconsistent, and not very fun. But uh, we got some dry practice, we got some wet practice and I feel confident that we have a setup for whatever gets thrown at us with this crazy Southern California weather. So we'll see what happens. So if the elements do become a factor, it's really gonna be about what team and what driver is prepared best, not only physically with their vehicle and what they put into it in the off season, but also mentally up here. And can they adapt to the changing environment and changes on the course? The track is extremely wet and the driver's nerves are very high. Many drivers are ready to do battle, but one driver and contender in the Formula Drift Championship is having some trouble in the pits. That driver is Ryan Turk. We went out for the first practice run. Engine came back with no oil pressure. Um, pulled the pan off. The oil pump had grenaded, so we decided to pull the engine, obviously. I have to talk on the radio. Woo, stressing me out, yeah? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, goodies. Yeah. Oil pump exploded. Uh, we had no oil pressure. Uh, second, our first lap of practice, so uh, we came back, pulled the pan, found all the oil. Uh, we have a spare engine that we're assembling right now. Uh, run out of time, so this thing's pretty much ready to get dropped back in. And uh, fingers crossed to make it out there for our tandem battle. As Ryan Turk and his team are thrashing to get the engine back in, the battles begin. Frederick Osbo, the defending champion, going against Formula Drift rookie Sheng Zhang Zun. Battles continue on course, as does the time ticking down for Ryan Turk and his team. Matt Field and Kyle Mohan are on track for the third battle of competition and still no sign of Ryan Turk. Finally, during the fourth battle of Christoph Blues and Alec Honnadale, there seems to finally be some life for Ryan Turk and his team. As they finally fire up the engine, it looks like they're going to make their way to the starting grid. We all thrashed hard. We, it was all hands on deck. We got the new engine in the car just in time to head out for a tandem battle against Yuha. Uh, laid down the best lead lap I could. Uh, Yuha went into the tires, and then I just had to go out there and just put a run together. So uh, we got the win. We're moving on to top 16. We're in the show. Naval's performance worked their butts off. I'm super pumped that we uh, are continuing on, and uh, we'll see if we can't get on top of the podium. As one story ends, the battles continue as we advance on in the top 32. I went up against Alex Hilbrin, and you know we just went out there, uh, full throttle, just laid it out on the course, and everything worked out great for me. It was finally a solid condition to run. Uh, all the power down. I think the fans enjoyed it. I sure as hell had fun. Then, Ken Gushi gets dealt a wet hand. Conditions were looking good up until it was our turn to line up. And all of a sudden, we just started to see heavy drops of uh, rainfall. So I knew uh, I would have to take it easy in certain areas of the track. That's exactly what I did in the lead lap. Uh, I seemed like Farouk had strained up behind me, took a shallower line. To take advantage of that, I just kind of 
you know, kept a safe distance between, behind him on the second lap, and uh, he ended up, unfortunately, taking himself out. Unfortunately, the rain continues for two-time champion Chris Forsberg. That is not fun. <laughs> he was carrying some speed and going wide, like I said. I was like here, like, but like, like I said, in my head, I'm like, there's no way he's going to make it. And he, he tagged and he did a little straighten and then just looped it right around in front of me. So he, he overcorrected? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just wrapped up top 32 battle with Robbie Nishida. It was literally like a sheet of ice out there, but uh, we prevailed, bounced off the wall a couple times. My guys are getting the car uh, fixed back up. Uh, just pumped to be moving on. You know, it is literally a crap shoot out there. This is the absolute worst conditions I've ever driven in because it's a street circuit. The oil that's coming up from the cars driving on it all the time and the lack of rain, just pedaling the best I can, and that's the goal for the rest of the night. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Nexen Tire. Driving tomorrow by FormulaD.com. For merchandise, tickets, and series information, head to FormulaD.com. And by the U.S. Air Force. Aim high. As a wet, wild, and hectic Top 32 comes to an end, we forge the Top 16. The Umbrella Girls, the media, and of course, some of the fans' favorite drivers enter the Top 16 driver introduction. They hear the cheers and jeers from the fans as they get prepared to do battle in the Top 16. Uh, first round Top 16 going against mad, crazy Mike Widett. The defending champion Frederick Osbo goes against the Kiwi favorite, the quad rotor twin turbo car deemed Rad Bull. Great lead run, and uh, just to give Mad Mike a good chase run, and go from there. Copy that. Frederick Osbo getting advice from his team as Mad Mike Odette lives up to his name and goes a little too mad into the first rear clipping zone, eventually spinning out and knocking himself out of competition. In the second battle of the top 16, it poises San Jose, California zone, Matt Field against Latvian driver Christophs Belus. Both vehicles housing eight cylinders under the hood. It was a fun one to watch. It was a tough battle, you know. We got one more time and Christophs is a, he's a real competitor, man. Especially this year, he's turned it up. His car's fast and he was on point. He was right there the whole time. I could see him. So I'm just lucky that the, the car was there. You know, my boys gave me an awesome car and the Falcon tires were hooking up amazing, and I just can't say thank you enough. Ryan Turk now firing on all cylinders after feverishly getting the car back on track goes against Tyler McCory. Tyler makes a critical mistake around the last clip, giving the advantage to Ryan Turk. And then, with a strong follow run, Ryan Turk gets the eventual win. Odie Bakshis versus Dean Carnage Carney from Ireland. Odie Bakshis wants to get back on the podium after his second place finish last year. Odie Bakshis gets the win. In the next battle, it's Ken Gushi, runner-up for the 2015 Formula Drift Championship, going against Hong Kong's own Charles Ng. The Boost Brigade captain of Ken Gushi gets the eventual win, taking out Charles Ng. Our next battle poses the big smoky angle of Forrest Wang, who operates Get Nuts Laboratory out of Las Vegas, Nevada, going against the former champion of Michael Essa. The big angle and big smoke is too much to handle for Michael Essa as he shuts it down and Forrest Wang gets the win. Well, top 16, we went out, we had almost dry conditions. There's definitely still some wet patches on the track. We saw Mad Mike spin out. I also hit, I think, the same spot that he did. Got a close to bridge wall where the judges want us. However, the car got loose. We tagged the wall. Chelsea bumped into us and threw us offline. He started passing us, and uh, it kind of all went out the window at that point. On the chase run, we were you know, sticking close with them, moving all the way to the hairpin. We dove in hard, got hard on the brakes. The car didn't want to slow down, and uh, we bumped into the front of him. Uh, my front tire locked up, and I just kind of came around, and that was the end of my day. Top 16 battle with Jeff Jones. Um, lead run was amazing and uh, chase run against Jeff. Uh, we were, you know, all over him. He made some big mistakes, bounced off the wall, got a little aggressive. But it was a good battle, and I was pumped to see him so close in my rear view uh, when I was leading. So uh, hats off to Jeff for bringing it this year. And, uh, you know, we're moving on to the to the grade eight, uh, facing Chelsea Denofa, I believe. And, uh, you know, looking forward to some fun. As the fun continues here on the streets of Long Beach, we begin our battles in the grade eight. First up, defending champion Frederick Osbo versus the beast from the bay, Matt Field. Matt Field had an amazing chase run on us, and honestly, I've been a little bit worried about this battle because he's one of those really good up-and-coming stars for drifting. 
but he got to work on his mental game a little bit. He's right there, but he got to hold it together. Uh, so he's been out there and do a, a close change. Copy that. Couldn't hold it together for the lead. Uh, he spins in front of me. I barely escape. And uh, yeah, that's two in a row now. Mad Mike and Matt Field taking themselves out. Well, that was an awesome grade eight freaking battle. Uh, Brian Turks just, you know, he's on it. I know what to expect with him. And uh, we have to battle it hard. Everything went smooth and good. Um, I guess he fumbled behind me a little bit. So, you know, I'm super stoked to be moving on. Uh, that was a crazy battle against Forrest in the top eight. I mean, all weekend he's been on fire, trucking in so much angle, and um, I was told that I just have to keep my distance and give him space to uh, give him space to transition. And ex I did exactly that. But on my lead lap, they're like, dude, you gotta just mimic exactly what he's been doing all weekend. Take it to the walls, with a lot of angle. I did just that and I got the win. So uh, I'm praying that this weather stays consistent and dry, and uh, hopefully we'll get to the finals from here. Yeah, it's, uh, he led first, JR left the line. I, he actually pulled me a little bit on the straightaway. I had to play some catch up in the first turn. That was a little hairy. Got the back bumper pretty much on the wall. Was able to cut in a little early, get that transition in, and get right up on it. It was good, so close through the last two turns. Uh, again, man, like I'm just driving with everyone that I drive with in English Town. All my buddies out there, like one after one, Stonebeck, Forsberg, JR. I'm just, I mean, the runs were just great. He was just on my door, according to my spotter. So maybe I left him a little bit much. Um, good for him here. Chelsea's been battling gremlins the last couple years. So pumped to see him come out swinging round one. You know, we got a long year ahead. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So stoked on our results. Stoked how my team and I re uh, performed. And uh, yeah, man, on to the next one. When we come back, we'll find out who our victor is as we enter the final four. Formula Drift on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Universal Technical Institute. Chosen by industry, ready to work. By FormulaD.com. For merchandise, tickets, and series information, head to FormulaD.com. By Nitto Tire, fueled by enthusiasts. And by Blackview, over the cloud. As we enter the final four, it's a repeat from last year's Long Beach Finals. Hardest track to watch at, yeah. Long Beach. So, you know, it was a one more time with Frederick Osbo in the top four. And the second time around, I was feeling super confident. I actually bogged it a little bit off the line following him. And when I looked up, he was like two cars down the straightaway already. It's a tough battle, but you know, honestly, first round, top four, uh, I'm really proud of the whole team. Everything's, uh, we're on a good track. Unfortunately for Odie Bakshis, it's not a repeat of last year, just a bit outside of grabbing a podium finish. But for Danofa and his team, high fives all around, as he's guaranteed, at minimum, second place here in Long Beach. And with Danofa's victory comes, unfortunately, Ken Gushi's loss. Woo! That was so rad. Man, fantastic run. Gushi had a little bit of an e-brake drag on the front straight, but he got through it, drove up to his door as good as possible try to stay on him. Vice versa, the same thing. I heard his car the whole way. I think I just was a little bit closer in front of the judges and it gave, us the, gave me the advantage. It's a close run for sure. <laughs> I'm stoked to be getting on the podium. My first carbon fiber trophy. It's my fifth year in Formula D. Andy complaining that I never had a carbon fiber trophy pointing me out in the driver's meeting. So this one is for you, Andy. Proud of you, buddy. Thank you, man. I had to come all the way over here. I heard you I won. I shouted you out, bro. You way <laughs> going against Ozzo? I was waiting for you, man. Yeah, yeah I would have had it. it. Did he do anything He's shitty? super consistent. Did just he do anything sketchy at no. all? Okay. But I went in a little slower to the hairpin just because of last year and just because I saw Mike run into his door on yep. the hairpin. Yep. Some people, I don't know, he seemed fine. Um, just keep that in mind, but dude, don't. Awesome. Thank you, man. Good luck. Tell me about Denofa, please. Uh, straight up. I mean, it's like a Matt Field chasing Matt Field. Oh, uh, he didn't chase him the whole way. It's like chasing kind of Odie. I think Matt's a little bit up. And then he's relatively smooth through uh, 11. Awesome. Thank you, Seth. The finals are set. 
Will the defending champion of Frederick Osbo repeat here in Long Beach and begin this season just like he ended last season? Or will Chelsea Denofa shock the drifting world, grabbing his first ever podium and add to that his first ever victory? Frederick Osbo goes hard into the wall. Chelsea Denofa goes even harder, splitting his back wing. Chelsea Denofa applying the pressure, practically rubbing his GT radials on the door of that SR by Toyota TC. Well done, Freddie. Good lead run. Um, he was quite close, actually, on the chase. It's probably 50-50. Make sure you're close. Copy that. The spotter of Frederick Osbo, team owner Stefan Papadakis, gives Frederick the info to defeat Chelsea Denofa. Chelsea Denofa has plans of his own. He gets out to the touch and go, massaging his back bumper into the wall. Transitioning into the first rear clipping zone, he's on it once again. Frederick Osbo trying to narrow in and close that proximity as they make their way into the second rear clipping zone. One more clipping point for glory, who's gonna get the victory? The judges seem to have a decision. It's not a one more time, everybody needs to be moving down there. All right, Freddie, uh, I'll see you down at the podium. We'll find out who won. And it is Chelsea Denofa. First Garmin Fiber Trophy, first win. I had to knock out like four champions to get here. So stoked right now. <laughs> the PC Racing GT Radio BMW, Chelsea Denofa. It was like champion after champion, all these amazing drivers just like somehow wiping them out. I have no idea. Driving my heart out, doing the best I can. And uh, it just feels great to be up here, man. Good. It feels so good. You do know you deserve it, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. In association with Formula Drift, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.